Hey there, and welcome back. Awesome video in the works for you tonight. Now, you can't tell it, but the sun is almost set here to the west. And you know what that means? In just a little while, we're gonna be able to fire this rifle up after dark and do some long range shooting. So, that said, what do we have in store for you? My goal here is to create one of the most comprehensive videos on YouTube around clip-on night vision devices. So, to do that, I'm gonna use my trusty PVS-30 that I've owned about 18 months now. I have a lot of rounds through this and a lot of time behind it. And then also, I recently was able to pick up a used PVS-27. Now, if you're into clip-on night vision devices, you know these two units often come up together in conversation. They're priced very similar and their capabilities are very similar. So many times you'll read on the forums or on different groups, folks are asking, which unit do I go with? And what I want to do here is create a two-part series part one and a part two that are going to look at two very different parts of these optics and then at the end give you my thoughts on how these units stack up and maybe where my preference is. So what's that going to look like? In part one we're going to take this rifle we're going to move down to a hundred yards and we're going to go through a hundred yard kind of zero shift and give you a look at how these stack up on paper. In my opinion that's one of the most important things with a clip-on night vision device. Also in part one I'm going to show you quickly how to zero this Raptar. Now that I've got the Tacticam, it's pretty cool to show you how simple it is to get this thing zeroed after dark. That's something I wasn't able to cover in my previous Raptar PVS-30 video. So we'll do that in part one. We'll close that out. And then in part two, we'll push the distance out further. And we'll be able to show you both of these units out to distance. So what I want to try to do is give you an overview of these two units, about 500 yards, about 700 yards about 800 to 900 yards and then if we're making good hits we'll try to push further so that said we're out here it's middle of july we've got a huge moon coming so there's going to be a ton of ambient light out here which is going to make for really great conditions and unfortunately i won't be able to get footage in the darker conditions i tried to do that with the tactic cam it's just too grainy to give you good footage so i can't really give you a comparison of bright ambient light against dark because the Tacticam and the Psionics just don't handle the dark light very well. So keep in mind when I'm making this video, it's going to be a huge moon. There's going to be a ton of ambient light, but that's going to make for some awesome shooting conditions. So let's move into part one. Let's take a look at kind of a quick gear overview, 100 yards, Wilcock Raptor zeroing. So before we move down and shoot, I just wanted to give you a quick look at the gear we're going to be using tonight while we still have some daylight. So for a rifle, we're going to be shooting the Knight's Armament SR25 and 6.5 Creedmoor. I'm shooting the 130 grain Hornady ELD bullet. It's a great shooter, sub MOA. It'll get out to distance no problem. Suppressor is the Knight CRS suppressor. Mounts right onto the two port brake that this upper has on it. So that'll be the rifle. Extremely capable, no questions there of this rifle's capability to get out to distance. The optic, we're going to run a Night Force Attacker F1 5 to 25 with the Trimmer 3 reticle. In my opinion, the Trimmer 3 reticle is an awesome tool to pair with clip-on night vision. Reason being, you can make all of your holes in the reticle, and you don't have to worry about dialing your knobs in the dark when you can't see them. So I believe the Trimmer 3 is an awesome tool to pair with a clip-on device. I started shooting at night with the Mil R reticle, and it just gave me trouble because I had to dial as hard to hold. So I believe the Trimmer 3 is critical. Also, for ranging and IR, work we'll be using the Wilcox Raptor. This thing I zero this at five mils below my center crosshair so that when I'm shooting at distance you're rarely shooting 100 yards in the dark and if you are you don't need the illuminator so when I push that down below the crosshair that means I'm actually putting IR illumination down in the part of the reticle that I'm using and you'll see that when I show you how easy it is to zero this thing. For clip-on devices I want to give you just a quick look at the PVS-30. So this PVS-30 is an older refurbished unit that Knight's Armament put out. You can see it's the two AA battery model. And you can see I put a extender for the focus ring on it made by MKM Machining, I believe it is. This is a critical piece of gear. So when you look at this PVS-30, and it mounts on the rail right here. So it's gonna mount and sit right here in front of the optic just like that. I'm not going to tighten it down because I want to get it off easily, but the controls, you can see the gain knob is way up here. And then normally your focus ring would be this ring up here. This extension would not be here. 
So when you're using a long optic like this, on this rifle for me, it was almost impossible to reach this focus ring while remaining behind the optic. So this extension I put on it totally fixed that problem. I still have to stretch to get to the gain knob, but it is doable when you're behind the rifle. The mount, this mount is kind of a Knight's quick release design. It's got a lever with a latch in it that um, if I were to push this on down, it would latch in, and then you just pop that to remove this, and that one comes right off. Now the PVS-27, you notice it's quite a bit different in design. It's, it's much thicker around the front side. I believe it is a little bit heavier. It runs a LaRue mount, which you can see right here, just the LaRue style quick detach mount, which is super handy. Also, two AA batteries in it, but what I like about it is the controls are quite different. So the gain knob is here, very similar spot, but then the focus is actually right here on top. So when I mount this on the rifle, just open the mount, and it's gonna clip on just like PVS-30, if I were to latch it down. My gain, I still have to reach to get to it, but this little focus is so much easier to reach. I very much prefer this when you're paired with a long optic like that. Other things I like about this PVS-27, when you turn it on, the gain knob, to turn it off, you have to actually lift it and push it forward to the off position. You can't just push it and click it off. The PVS-30, you just roll it forward and it goes off. Reason I like the lift to shut off is if you're adjusting behind the scope, you know when the scope is all the way maxed out in gain. The PVS-30, if you're trying to push your gain up, you actually can push it so far you shut it off on accident. So, One thing to note about the PVS-27, if you see the way this ocular lens, the whole front piece sits down over the rail and you can see there's very little clearance, in this case against the weights that I have on my rifle, but on some of my rifles, it actually interferes with attachments that you would put on the side of the rifle. So for instance, I put this on my SR25 ECC. I did not have the diving board for the Wilcox, so I was running a Luna illuminator up here at the nine o'clock position and didn't work. The PVS-27 actually in interfered with the mount on the illuminator, so I could not pair those two together. So something like the PVS-30, where it's got a much more traditional type front lens, it does not extend down below, Something to think about depending on the rifle you're mounting it on. So that was just a quick kind of gear overview I wanted to run through with you. Now with that, let's roll into some 100 yard zeroing footage, and then we'll roll into footage zeroing the Raptar. So one of the first things I want to do is show you a 100 yard group with the PVS-30 and the PVS-27 and the associated zero shift. So I've already fired three rounds earlier today to get my daylight zero. Now I've got the PVS-30 installed. Let's put three rounds at 100 yards and see what it does. There's two bigger dots down there. I'm going to put the PVS-30 on the bottom dot. All right, I'm going to take a look at that, and then we'll swap to the PVS-27. So I just got back from checking the 100-yard target with the PVS-30. The three rounds are roughly an inch. They might have pushed just a little bit high, maybe a tenth, but nothing major. So let's pop this off. And we'll install the PVS-27. Love the mount on this PVS-27. It's a LaRue mount, very easy to use. I'm not gonna touch anything on the scope. Now we'll shoot this at the top dot. See what our zero shift looks like with it. So you can probably tell in the video, the moon's popped up over the side of a hill over here. It's lit me up, but the target is still down there in the shadow. So same target conditions. PVS-27 installed. Let's put three rounds at the top dot. Check our group. And zero shift. Okay, I'll run down and take a look.
Here's our 100 yard target that we've now shot three times. Center dot, three rounds, daylight. Bottom dot, three rounds, PVS 30. Top dot, three rounds, PVS 27. And you can see that PVS 27 has a pretty significant zero shift. I experienced this on multiple rifles. It is repeatable. It's about a 0.7 mil shift to the right and 0.1 mil shift up. So I'm going to dial that on my scope now and we'll try to put three in the center. So we had a pretty large zero shift when we installed the PVS 27. How do we correct that? It's super simple. So you saw my shift was up a little bit and to the right. I measure that with the reticle. I'm going to dial down one tenth. And then I'm going to dial left 0.7. Now the good news is this shift is repeatable and consistent when I remove and install the PVS-27. So I know when I put this on, that's the correction I have to dial in. Another cool thing that you can do to check your zero shift, if you have this Raptar zeroed in the daylight, like I do, five mils below your crosshairs, when I put this PVS-27 on and turn the pointer on, it moves the laser over off of where I'm zeroed. So right away, before I ever shot this thing, I knew I was going to have a zero shift, and I'm just thankful it's consistent. So we've dialed on our correction. Let's put three rounds down there and see where we land again on that top dot. So take a look. So you can see we were spot on with our correction of the PVS-27 on the top dot. So we dialed down one tenth, left 0.7, and you can see we dropped three rounds, dead center of that one inch blue dot. So daylight zero, you can see it was dead center on the center dot, PVS-30, pushed up maybe one, two tenths. The PVS-27 had a pretty nasty zero shift to the right, but as it's consistent, we dialed on the correction and drilled that center blue dot. Now, All right, guys, just a quick video zero on the Wilcox. I just put this on this rifle, so I've got it set to the pointer. I'm gonna turn that on. You can see the pointer, so I wanna bring that pointer five mils below. Let me first get the windage. It's just like a scope, and then it's got little screws. Okay, that looks pretty good. And there's an elevation screw on top. You just bring it down to where you want it. There's five mils. I'm going to bring it left just a click or two. It's hard to get in the dark, huh? There we go. All right, so that's five mils. So why do I put it at five mils below? Well, because when I run the flood, now it floods the whole area below my reticle that I'm using. So let's look at, there's a full size IPSC out there. So now if I point at it, five mils below the reticle, and I range it, it ranges that at 858 yards. So now I'd be ready to take a shot. So if you've made it this far, I really appreciate you sticking around. At this point, we're going to wrap up part one, do a quick summary and then I'll set you up for part two. So what we saw here in part one, I think was pretty important information. So we did a quick year overview to give you an idea of what I'm working with, but then we moved down to the 100 yard line and we installed the PVS-30 and the PVS-27 to get an idea of what the zero shift looks like. Now, the PVS-30, in my opinion, awesome. It was pretty much dead nuts on within one minute shift. I'm gonna call it maybe a 10th high that it moved, almost nothing. The PVS-27, however, when we installed that, you saw a pretty significant zero shift, moving the bullet up and to the right. While that's a bummer, from what I research online, I find that actually is fairly common with these PVS 27s, especially the older units like this. Both of these are older, green phosphor, they've been around for quite a while, so I'm not surprised this unit has a zero shift. Now the good news about it is it is repeatable. I've run this PVS 27 now on multiple rifles. I've also removed and installed it multiple times, and each time, I dial in the correction and I make my hits. You'll actually see that in part two. Several times in part two, 
I swap between clip-ons and each time I just dial in the correction and I make my hits. So while it's kind of annoying, it's not the end of the world, especially if you're aware of it. The other thing we saw is how crazy easy it is to zero out this Wilcox Raptor when you're under night vision. Very easy to see that pointer and move it over to where you want it. Now that said, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd help me grow the channel and stick around for part two. So if you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a subscribe, a like, and a comment on this video. It's your interaction that's going to help me grow this channel and do more cool video work like this. Also, don't forget to check me out on Instagram, which I started up fairly recently, at Mountains Mullets America. And on that page, it's a great place to get an idea of what I'm working on, kind of a sneak peek. And also, it's an awesome place for us to interact through private messages to get video ideas or talk about maybe what you're up to or different type shooting conversations. So anyway, if you enjoyed it, stick around because part two is going to be coming out pretty soon. And we're going to push both of these clip-ons out to very far distances.